Click Dork back again. And hey, this video is for all of you on-premise or client-managed ClickSense users who've seen all the posts about the OpenAI connector that Click now has for the cloud. Isn't that exciting? Yeah. Well, what about you? Like, you need to do that too. You want to access that wealth of things. You want to stay current, right? Don't worry, ClickDork's got you back. There's absolutely no reason that you can't reach out to the OpenAI platform via Click on premise. Because all large language models, OpenAI included, have a REST connection that they use. Now, for those of you who are in the cloud, and say, yay, but I've got the OpenAI connector. This video isn't for me. Guess what? Maybe you want to reach a private large language model, or maybe you refer to it as a small language model if you're training it yourself. And then you're like, oh, no, I need a connector for that. Guess what? I just got done saying it. All large language models used REST connections. Hey, we have a REST API, don't we? Sure we do. So all you've got to do is choose the data source and you're going to choose REST. Now it's just a matter of putting in the parameters for this. Well, the REST API URL for open API to do completions where you're passing it a question, trying to get an answer back, is simply this open API v1 completions the method is going to be a post we're going to have to pass it a body with a question well gosh you don't really know what that body is going to be all the time so all we have to do is pass it a dummy body in the connection now you could make this your real connection if you want to ask the same question all the time Hey, we're cooking with gas here, right? Um, I guess we just run this thing. The real work comes down here in the query headers. What we need to do is we need to create some query headers here that we're going to use for authorization. The authorization type is a bearer token where you get your API token from Open API. If you're not sure how to do that, just watch my video about using the OpenAI connector and I show you where you would go in your account with OpenAI to get that API token. So that's the general syntax. I'm going to put my actual token in here and hopefully it doesn't end up showing the whole thing, but whatever, I can delete that one. Um, we need to add a second header. And that's going to be for content type. We're telling it, hey, how are we going to pass you um, my data? And we're going to pass that data via a JSON structure, which was that body. This is a JSON body, and you're like, ah, oh, man, it just looks kind of like an HTML-ish thing. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's pretty well uh, standard, um, so no problems there. We're going to put that in there, and all we have to do now is give this thing a name. And so this, I'm just going to call this my demo video open AI connection. I'm going to test that thing out. Yay! I've got a connection to open AI. And so I'm going to create that thing there. Now all I have to do, I'm in my application and I'm going to try to find this demo API one. And uh, as you notice, I may or may not have thousands and thousands of connections uh, that I deal with. Well, one of these is going to be this demo AI connection. And all we have to do to call this is do that selection like you're used to doing with any SQL database. I can make this larger. Hey, I don't want a limit on this or I can specify a limit on this. And I simply check this root thing. If you haven't used the API connector before, this is going to look a little odd to you, which is okay. It, it should look a little odd. We're going to say, I want to put that into my script. 
And now I'm going to walk through this a little bit. It's, you see how he's doing these several different selections. He's going to give us information about usage, about choices, which are my responses, and about the root model. What it does is it also builds the code for you to parse these things out into a table called choices, a table called usage, and a table called root. I'm not going to do anything else to the code at this point. I do have an exit script in here that I'm going to put so it'll actually exit my script. And I'm going to go ahead and say run. Now what this should do is connect to my open API. And if I go to look at my data model viewer, I would expect we have three tables. The root here, if I look at this, just says, hey, this is the ID of what was run. It was the text completion model or the text completion type, and it was the DaVinci 3 model. If I look down here, I want to show you this one first for usage. I can see that it took me five tokens to pass my question seven tokens to get the answer back for a total of 12 tokens and tokens are how you pay open api for the right to call their api because it's not free there is a charge for that if you're calling your own private learning large language model fantastic if you're calling another model there's probably going to be a different um, cost structure than open api but it's very 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 cheap the last one, of course, is my answer. Oh, look, I asked a question and got this is indeed a test as my answer back. Well, that seems pretty cheesy. <laughs> I want to do a little bit more than that, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to swap that code out. I want to get rid of this. And you'll see that what I'm doing is I'm using a different um, connector, same exact configuration, but I wanted to make sure I had it preset so that you could clearly see my demo video one and I'll eventually just obviously just go ahead and say let's delete that guy right um, so that I can do my next demo and I could create that thing on the fly it's going to connect to that using that connector but in this case I don't want to use exactly what it gave me what I want to do is say whoa 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 that that question that I asked you was just a test that was just to get my connector right. But I really want to ask you any questions that I'm feeling at any time, any way I want to. And so I've got to build that same JSON body. And I do that in my script. So this is exactly the same code that we had before, except for this part with the prompt. In this case, I'm saying, can you tell me two things that you know about ClickSense? So I'm actually trying to get information back out of this large language model. Everything else is the same. I do a trace command here. If you're not familiar with trace, look that up. But it's I want to see what that command looks like as I'm building it. So if there's questions or a problem, I can realize, oh my gosh, I should have done this. I should have added that. I missed a comma. I missed a semicolon. And I can see what is wrong with that syntax. But all of this is exactly the same, with the exception here that I've added this code that says with connection, and I'm going to tell it I want to replace the body of my connection with the request body that I've just constructed right here. Other than that, everything else is exactly the same. I'm going to get these three tables back. I drop the giant table that got built. And if I run this thing, hopefully we're going to see what I asked for in my request body. So it shows me that request body. It'll actually go off and now process this thing and come back. I get three rows back. And if I go look at my data model now, I'm going to see those same three tables. My usage here, my tokens to complete one up. And if I look at my choices, why now instead of this is a test, I actually have the answer to my questions. ClickSense is a business intelligence and visualization platform. ClickSense is powered by an in-memory associative engine.